Hello friends, I'm Will Michael and you're watching Connecticut Naturalist. We'll start off this week's episode with a look back at spring peeper activity from the spring of 2009. The most welcoming sound of the year may be the call of the spring peeper. No other sound signifies the return of spring quite as much as this tiny frog. As the night temperatures increase and winter's grass begins to slip, the sound of spring peepers emanates from vernal pools and wetlands. At times it can be deafening. Although small and unassuming, this tiny frog is hardier than it appears. During the winter, they don't burrow underground, but simply nestle under some leaves where they'll freeze solid during the sub-zero temperatures. Their bodies contain a natural form of antifreeze that allows them to enter a frozen state without rupturing or damaging their organs or tissue. As night temperatures rise, mouths begin to vocalize, usually beginning in late March or early April. Only the mouths vocalize. Each one hopes to attract a female. In person, the peep is incredibly loud. It doesn't seem possible for such volume to come from such a small animal. The skunk cabbage is just beginning to unfurl, and as the frogs chirp nearby, the landscape resembles that of an alien environment. As the night proceeds, we finally capture the secondary call on film. I've been waiting many years to observe this, and tonight luck is on our side. The spring peeper's alternate call resembles that of a high-pitched trill, a fluttering chirp, if you will. It appears that two mouths are competing for the same position on this log, prime turf for attracting a mate. The spring peeper can be identified by its small size and distinct X pattern of pigment on the back. When not engaged in their breeding activity, they spend the remainder of the year in the forest, hunting insects on the forest floor and low tree branches. <laughs> 